Did you know that you can use Azure Bot Service to create conversational chatbots, a new way of interacting with your application, a more natural way with the tools that your users already have? Today, a quick introduction into this service, so stay tuned. Okay, so let's talk about bot service. First of all, to talk about bot service, we need to understand what bot is. So a bot is a simply an application, an application that converses with users through text, graphics, or speech. And a bot service is a service within Azure that comes together with something called bot framework to that together they provide tools for you to build, test, deploy, and manage intelligent chatbots in one place. So those, this is the high level description of what this really is, but we'll talk about a bit more in detail. So first of all, what do you really get here? You get a bot framework SDK. So this is a SDK written in both .NET and Node.js for you to develop your bots. You also get tools through, from the bot framework. They are for you to use to do end-to-end -end bot development, like a bot emulator, etc. And also you have bot framework service, in short, BFS. This is a middleware service that translates all the external channels for you during the conversation. So you can actually integrate with multiple services. And lastly, you also have bot deployment and channel configuration pages in Azure for you to streamline the process and have a single place to manage all of those. So I talk about this bot framework service. It's a bit complicated when I said it. So let's look at this picture. If you, for instance, have five channels like email, Facebook Messenger, Skype, Slack, and maybe it's just web application, a web chat, a bot framework service is a channel that integrates all of those external channels, translate those, their unique messaging patterns into a single message that is understandable by your bot. So basically there's a unification service for all those channels so that they can send whatever they need to send. And this translates to a simple message for your bot to handle. So the code that you write to bot is always the same for almost all the channels. So how does the bot work? Whenever a user connects to your bot through some channel, it first connects to that channel. When he does that, and a message is sent to bot framework service, which then sends a message to your bot that the conversational uh, conversation was just updated and user joined the channel. After that, a bot needs to join that channel as well. And when that happens, you are now ready to start conversation. So when you say hello on that Skype channel, this message is being sent to bot framework service, which then is sent a message hello to your bot. And then of course, all the magic that you need to happen happens now. So you can process this message, integrate other services whenever this happens, or simply in case of Mac echo application, send a message you said hello back to your channel so that user sees this on the chat, a message you said hello. And of course, when that is done, a channel notifies bot framework service that it received, a user received that message. So response is being delivered back to your bot and a bot closes the conversation saying everything was processed fine. And this is a highly simplified version of how the bot works, but this is what it really is. Once conversation is updated and you're in the conversation together with your bot, a simple post calls sending messages back and forth between you and the bot. Additionally, bot service delivers multiple integration. For instance, the most common ones are Q&A Maker, a service that allows you to import question and answer um, files for you to integrate so users can actually ask questions using natural language and get most common answers. Additionally, you have Lewis, which is Language Understanding Intelligence Service. This is a simple natural language processor that allows you instead of typing hard comments or clicking buttons for users to use their natural language in a chat and you understand that and do some actions based on that. And of course, since you are coding this using .NET or JavaScript, you can use any RESTful service for integration purposes. One of the most common scenarios is information chatbot. 
so you can connect your mobile devices, consumer PCs through those channels that we are saying, and then use Q&A maker service to answer most common question. Imagine this being like a wiki, so a bot that answers question, most typical questions of your users. You additionally can do IoT scenarios, so your users can type to your bot and control their devices through, again, bot service and language understanding processing. And of course, you are always allowed to do e-commerce. So create an application that will allow users to either use speech service or their mobile devices, and then connect to your structured data through all those integration patterns. So I have three demos for you today. First of all, we're going to create a service, a bot service. Then I'm going to show you how to develop and test your bot locally and how to deploy this to Azure. So let's get right to it. Okay, so let's start creating our bot. Let's hit on plus and type bot. And the option that you want is web app bot. Hit on it, hit create and provide a name. And this actually is pretty important because this is a bot handle name. You will see it in a couple places when you're configuring bot. So remember this because this is important. I'm going to call it Azure for everyone bot. That name is currently free, so I'm going to use it. You need to provide a resource group as always. I'm going to choose location North Europe because this is the closest to me. A pricing tier is how many premium messages you can actually send. A premium message is a dedicated channel. Some of the channels are considered premium messages. If you're just communicating through standard messages, the pricing tier doesn't matter. I'm going to select a F0, which is free. If you want to understand more about pricing, and premium messages, read more in the pricing details. And next you have app name. This is actually app service name. So this is the name of the service that will be hosting your bot logic. Next you have a template. In a template, you have a couple of options. First of all, you choose the language. It's either C sharp or Node.js. I'm gonna select C sharp and then you select a template. You have echo bot and basic bot currently. EchoBot is a simple bot that responds with the same message as you send it to, it to it, just to show you the service. And later, when you're going to be more advanced, choose a basic bot, which additionally delivers you language understanding and bot analytics, which is quite cool stuff, but maybe topic for another day. And if you're more advanced, you always have enterprise bot, virtual assistant, language understanding, Q&A bot, and more. You can actually view samples here. This will take you to GitHub and show you more samples. So hit on it, OK. Next, you need to provide app service plan. So this is the name of your app service plan. I'm going to also choose North Europe because I want all my services to be close to each other. And lastly, application insights. Again, choose the same region, North Europe. And the last option is auto create Microsoft app ID. It's a Microsoft app registration so that it is globally visible across multiple services. If you want to learn about this more, read out it about after this video. So hit create. And now your bot will be provisioned. There will be actually four resources that will be provisioned here. Therefore, this takes between two, three minutes. So I'm going to skip ahead. My bot was created and I can go to the resource now. But what I want to do first is go to the resource group to show you what was created. So inside of the resource group, four things were created. A web app bot, this is your bot service resource. That is this global single place for you to manage your bot. You have app service plan, this is the performance plan of your bot. You have an app service, this is the brains. So this is where your code resides and this is where all applications will be hitting. And you have application insights for logging and telemetry purposes. So if you want to manage your bot, go to web app bot. And here you have a couple interesting options. So on the left hand side, the most important ones are bot management options. First of all, you have build. You will actually go back here in a second. But this is the place where you can actually start developing your bot. And this is how it will actually, let's say, guide you through the process of developing your bot. Next, you have test in a web chat. So this is a simple simple web chat that you can use to test your bot. And as you see, when I joined the chat and an initial initialization was happening, 
and now bot is ready to start conversation. If you remember my diagram, this was this part when the conversation update went through that the user joined. And after that, following, a bot joined that conversation as well and welcomed me with this hello and welcome message. I can actually start typing now. If I type hi, since it's an echo bot, it responds echo hi. If you want, you can start over and of course notice the conversation started faster now because there was no this first initialization part. And it's really good for you to test that. But it's simple way. There are better ways. I'm going to show you that in a second. But for now, this is a very simple way to test the chatbot. You have analytics section on the left hand side. And because we second ago connected this web app bot to application insights during the creation, you have this user retention panel, user activities, how many users was using it, and it will refresh in a couple of minutes. So later on, you're going to see statistic of your users. Next, you have channels. This is one of those more powerful features and most key features of bot service. This is a place where you can enable multiple channels. You have featured channels like Cortana, Direct Line, Microsoft Teams, Skype, but also you have Kick, Slack, Facebook, and other more popular channels for you to use. You just hit through. An example would be, for instance, Slack. If you hit on it, you get like this couple things that you need to provide. And there's a very detailed step-by-step -step instruction. Just hit on it, go to Slack, configure it. And in a couple of minutes, your bot will be also available on Slack. It's really powerful, really great. And you don't really have to do anything other than just paste in few values and click few configuration settings. And lastly, you have some settings. So you can upload an icon, change the display name of your bot, provide a description and some more advanced stuff here as well. But no need for that right now. You can also do some stuff with speech here. You can do bot service pricing, so you can change the pricing tier of your bot service after the creation. But for now, let's go into the build section. So to build the bot, I will show you how to do it right now using .NET. I can actually download the source code. Since our bot was already provisioned using a standard echo template, you can actually download this code and start working from it. So I will actually include my application settings inside and download the source code. This takes about 30 seconds to one, two minutes. My download is ready, so I can hit download bot source code and get my source code downloaded. I will close this panel and of course, if you want to continue with this demo, also hit this get emulator and download bot emulator because you will need it for further steps. But you don't really need install command line tools if you're using uh, Visual Studio Code. But I will show you that in a second. So since I downloaded my source code, I can actually go to my downloads folder and extract it. So I'm going to extract it. Once I do that in the PowerShell command window, I'll actually open this folder and start Visual Studio Code here. So this is what is provisioned out of the box. There's a lot of files here. Don't worry about those at start. I'm going to explain the most important ones because there's a lot of stuff like post deployment scripts, like, um, like a deployment files, deployment configuration, etc, etc. But the most important for you is in the bots folder is this echo bot file. As you see, everything is underscored because I need to run .NET restore. This way I will restore all the packages that are within this project. And in a couple of seconds, squiggly lines disappeared and I actually can start making changes to my bot. So let's change that echo message to message and let's welcome message. Let's change that to hello Azure for everyone. Once you save it, you can simply run .NET build. And once this is built, you can actually hit .NET run. And now your bot is running and running and listening on this address. 
So how you can actually test it since it's running? It's not a web application, it's just an API that listens for your messages. To do that, you need this emulator that I was talking about, and I have it opened here. It looks very similarly to how Visual Studio Code works. So you need to add a new endpoint, provide this endpoint URL, and as it says, followed by API slash messages. So let's type that. You need to give it a name. I'm gonna call it demo bot. So this is just for you to understand which bot are you connecting to. So maybe a local also write it since this is a local host. You need to provide an application ID. And of course this depends on how your application is written, but in this demo, you actually need to provide it. So to get it, you go to app settings and you need to copy paste the Microsoft app ID and application password. Once you do that, you save the connection, you hit on it and open a chat with your bot. As you see, there a lot of things happened. So let's talk about what just happened. First of all, as you see on the left hand side in the panel, a post message was sent that I've connected to, to the service and a respond was um, sent from the service that hello Azure for everyone message. So a bot also joined the conversation and you can actually review everything here. If you actually click on it, you can see entire JSON files that was sent during the conversation. So if I type hi now, see that another post message was sent, then a service responded with hi. My service responded that a conversation replay was sent and service finished the conversation. You can actually click on each one of those to see what was sent. Entire JSON hey, hi, it's a plain text. It was sent from channel ID emulator, etc. And hitting on this one, it was sent back to channel emulator and the message was message hi. So using this bot explorer, you can test both locally and remotely. But if you're testing remotely, you need to install something called ngrok. If you're doing that, just Google how to use ngrok with Azure bot service since Microsoft has pretty good guides. For local development, you don't need ngrok at all. And uh, just for your information, ngrok is a simple open source proxy tool that allows you for bot servers in the cloud to communicate with your local emulator. So this is how you test the bot. Since we tested the bot, the last thing we need to do now is to deploy this to the cloud. So if we go back here, close this file, we want to deploy this to the cloud. So I'm going to finish debugging and I will actually deploy this to cloud. To deploy to cloud, there are several options to do so. I like the one that I used during my video on the app service. If you want to understand how I did that in a very detail, watch my video on the app service. But for now, you go just to Azure. Here you have a panel. If you have extension Azure account and Azure app service and you're logged in, you will see your subscription on the list. When you expand it, you will see your app service, which hosts your bot. And you simply hit right click deploy to web app. You need to provide a source folder. So this is the browse bin debug .NET core 2.1 and select. It will ask you if you want to override current deployment, hit deploy and wait about a minute. So I'm going to pause here and skip ahead. So the deployment succeeded. So if this worked, we did a small change. Let's review that change again. So we should see in the portal a new echo message starting with message and hello for Azure for everyone. So if I go back to my web browser and go test a web chatbot, I can actually say, hey, and see what happens. Perfect. Everything worked just fine. I was able to introduce new changes, deploy my bot to the cloud, and everything is ready for me to integrate with other channels. So now that the bot is ready, you have a couple of options. The first, probably you should decide on the channels. You should go to channels and decide which channels do you want to run. Probably the easiest for you without any effort and development is to use WebChat because WebChat channel is running by default and you can actually go to edit here and get this embed code. 
using this embed code here, you can actually copy this and paste it into any file. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to close Visual Studio, I'm going to create a simple index.html file. So index.html, remove extension, and open Visual Studio here. Once I do that, I have my index.html and can paste, paste my bot framework embed code and it says you just need to paste a secret here. So let's get the secret key from here. I'm gonna copy paste this, paste in this place, save it, put it down and open this index.html and say hey. As you see, we just embedded a simple chatbot in a simple web application in just a couple of minutes. This is out of the box connector that you can use, but there are many more. Of course, you can go down here and you can start enabling another channel. Couple of cool ones is for, of course, an email. So you can make a bot that responds on the emails, maybe analyze the email and do something based on that. Or you can do SMS type of bots or maybe a team channel bot. One of the cool ways of doing teams integrations with bots is for instance for Azure automation. So you can have a chat which basically will alert you or you can use to automate your Azure environment. Of course, here that doesn't end. There are plenty, many more scenarios. It's just a matter of how you want to automate them and if you need a conversa conversational channel for this automation purpose so that users can actually control it in more natural way. As you see, creating chatbots with Azure Bot Service is quite easy. Of course, this wasn't really a development tutorial of Bot Framework itself. Maybe next time that's going to be the topic. But for today, you should remember Bot Service is all about integrating, building, testing, deploying, and connecting your chatbot to external services. This is what Azure Bot Service is. That's it for today. If you like the video, hit thumbs up, leave a comment. And if you want to see more, subscribe and see you next time.